uh, thematic review is uh, Article uh, 58, which, which provides for periodic thematic review for the replacement, reduction, and refinement of the use of animals in procedure. So um, that's, that's, um, that means that every, every now and then, I think it's every five years since the directive, the Commission will look at a certain area of, of animal testing and, and review it and look whether it can be, the use of animals can be replaced in this area. So, for instance, when it comes to cosmetics, that what is, is was done in the UK uh, several years ago. The UK has has, um, has decided to ban the use of of, cos of animals for cosmetic testing, and then it was done at the EU level. And now the the, the government also announced uh, a ban on on um, animal testing for household products. So the idea is is the we have millions of animals uh, killed every year. So instead of of trying to basically the idea is trying to take one to to uh, to replace piece by piece and sector by sector because the, the number are so great that it's not going to to be uh, replaced uh, overnight. So better to take uh, to to take them sector by sector, and, and I think the the ban on, on animal testing in, in cosmetics is a good example that that it work. I mean there was, there have been some problems, but but overall the uh, uh, the cosmetic industry uh, has invested a lot more in in um, in alternative uh, because of because of the the cosmetic the ban on, on cosmetic testing. So we should should we should be uh, it should be done continuously. And we we asking the the UK and was was other member states to conduct their own review and and to expand the areas where animal, animal testing is banned. Uh, we think that we have um, a very good case when it comes to education uh, in the military, forensic forensic studies, and the use of primates in in brain research. Uh, now there is a lot of uh, there are many alternatives when it comes to brain research. Uh, uh, the use of of scanner, uh, for instance, uh, sophisticated brain scanners, has has been has shown to uh, to be a lot more efficient than, than the use of, of monkeys. So there is no reason to, to that um, this this has to be continued. And uh, when it comes to uh, the use of uh, animals for for testing for military purpose. Uh, that's mostly in the imported down, as, as far as I know, it's only imported down. And there is already, um, well, the Supreme Court in, in Germany has, has decided not to authorize this, uh, this test uh, recently. It was a test, it was uh, an application made by um, a US military uh, bases in Germany who wanted to test on animals, and the German Sup Supreme Court has decided that it doesn't pass uh, the ethical, ethical test. So. Why not in, in the UK and then expand in in Europe and and hopefully it can uh, we can st we can start reducing these huge numbers of, of animals killed uh, every year in, in laboratories. Uh, we are, there are some provisions in the directive as well related to transparency, accountability, and scientific scrutiny. Uh, Article forty three that says that. Um, it's on summaries for project application, and they should be published and include information on the objective of the project, including the predicted harm and benefits, and the number of types of them will be used. At the moment, the Home Office uh, is already publishing some, some summaries, but um, on the website, well, last time I went to the website, they were not, it was not for all, all the projects, as far as I know, it's not for all of them. And uh, it's, it's all sometimes very vague what they publish. So this article could could hopefully be interpreted so that the the UK uh, will improve uh, its information when it comes to animal testing. Article 38 and 39 is about retrospective assessment. So that's uh, uh, an innovation. That that means that for certain tests. Um, the, the scientists who have done the test will have to retrospectively assess it. So they have to, to check whether uh, the, object, the, the, objective, um, the scientific objective has been uh, achieved following uh, the, the test on animals. 
So that could be a good opportunity to show that animal testing very often fail, it's very un unreliable. So we would like this to be, uh, to be generalized because uh, the assumption that animal testing works is completely false. Animal testing is extremely un unreliable. And the problem is there is a lack of, of, uh, of review of, of what is of animal testing. And, and that, that this article could really um, uh, or increase, um, increase the, uh, these reviews. And, and uh, recital 41 says that uh, to ensure that the public is informed, it is important that objective information concerning projects using live animals is made publicly uh, available. So that's not an article, it's just a recital. But we, what we ask in the government is basically to get rid of section 24 of the Animal Protection, uh, of the uh, Animal Scientific Proje Protection Act. Section 24, it's uh, a section on information which says that anyone possessing uh, some information about, um, confidential information about tests that has been uh, undertaken in, in a certain laboratories can, can risk uh, imprisonment if, if uh, he publishes this information. So that's, that's absolutely, uh, that's, that's a section that's absolutely um, unacceptable and uh, there is no reason why there should be a, a, blanket, a blanket of secrecy like this on, on animal testing. Um, so we, we was, we hopefully this directive can, uh, can help improve transparency. And this is uh, the last slide on, on keeping the UK's animal uh, protection provision because as I was saying in, in some aspects the UK's uh, the directive doesn't go as far as, it, as the UK. Uh, so for instance we, we don't want um, so the use of great apes is, uh, is, is banned in the UK in the sense that the homophy doesn't give any license uh, to test in great apes. But the, the directive also banned the use of great apes, but with a safeguard clause. That means that in, in exceptional circumstances, which are not uh, specified, member states uh, can make an application to the Commission uh, to, to use great apes. We think that should, be, should not be transposed at all. The, the, the ban on, on the use of great apes should be absolutely, um, absolutely uh, total. Um, also, when it comes to inspection regimes, uh, the, the, the directive um, asks for a minimum um, number of inspection, which is currently lower than what we currently have in the, in the UK. So we don't want the MOFI to take advantage of this and, and say, now the, the directive only asks for this, so we will decrease uh, the number of, of inspection. And that's a real danger because already, uh, as I was saying, the Home Office is going towards uh, that direction. Uh, there is also an article about simplified proce procedure of, of authorization. We, we don't want this in the UK either. And there should never be exem exemptions to ban some testing on stray or feral animals, animals taken from the wild and animal belongings to endangered species. Uh, we believe that the, the ethical uh, consideration uh, um, are strong enough to um, uh, so that the test on these animals should be completely banned. Um, so that's, uh, that's all. That's, that's a key point. I hope it wasn't too, uh, too technical. I know it's a bit uh, dry <laughs> as, a, as a topic. Yeah. Animal testing is a, is a, is a vast uh, is, is a vast problem, uh, but uh, do you have any questions? Uh, do you have any comments, maybe? Just um, wanted to clarify the current legislative position. I, mean, I think the use of animals and procedures is currently regulated under the Animal Science and Procedures Act. Um, I'm not sure when the old directive gets recorded. The new directive has to be transposed by the um, beginning of 2013. So presumably, the new directive is not enforceable actually until it is transposed into national legislation. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So the old directive from 1986 that has been repealed already, and and it has been actually it has to be transposed because uh, this EU uh, usually legislates through two different type of of text, regulation and directive. Regulation work exactly as a law, so it's, it's applicable directly, it takes effect uh, immediately. While a directive has to be transposed 
in um, in um, in the UK, uh, I mean, in the member, the legislation of of the member states, and that's why there is a uh, two years gap between the time where it has been voted and, and the times where it's uh, it, it comes into force. Yeah. So a directive is not in itself any kind of legislation that must be adhered to. It's simply an instruction the country must implement legislation. To yes, to that's the right. Legislation in place. There is no legislation until it's. Yeah, and for the directive, uh, the member states have more rooms for uh, doing what they want. They have more rooms to to regal and to interpret. What a regulation is is like a law, so as I say, is implemented directly. So that's, that's a big difference, and so that's why uh, in in, this, in the case of the directive, uh, the UK can go further than, than what what is in uh, currently in it, and then. Well, it can also go lower, <laughs> but hopefully, if we if we campaign hard on this, we can achieve uh, good good progress. Yeah. yeah. What are you going to use instead of apes? What we're going to use instead of apes? Mm -hmm. Why well, great apes has not been used in in Europe for the last decade. Okay. So. But the animals you want to get rid of. Um, like what? We think that nowadays there are plenty of, of, of replacement with child. Yeah? Well, we have, uh, we, we have guarantee in the sense that we've been working with scientists using alternative for our company. Some scientists, but are, is there research or they work ahead of other scientists who are actually using that? Sorry, there? Is there research actually ahead of other scientists or doctors that are using that? Yeah, I mean, the, so the thing is... scientists building on the back of the scientists that are using that? No, I mean the, the scientists we are talking about here are using exclusively um, alternatives, and um, well, for instance, in the case of of, of primates, um, we we've been funding experiments in the University of Aston. So instead of using a primate brain to uh, to discover what's going on in the brain of, of a human, uh, let's use human instead uh, with the scanners and and. It has been demonstrated uh, scientifically in scientific publication that yeah. this can... Yeah, that's that's it. Sorry? For all illnesses and all diseases. Because at the end of the day, even though they're testing on animals, we haven't figured out the diseases yet. Yeah. So well, it's... How can we guarantee that by taking that away, you're not actually hindering medicine rather than just like, supporting the market? Well, it's, it's going to be a, um, a step by step process, but we think we actually uh, improve medicine. To lock it off already without actually well, no, no, it's not. It's not that. It's, it's alternative. Um, I, I reviewed. I was the, uh, the process of validation, for instance. Mm -hmm. That means that an alternative is proposed to egg vam, and that that alternative is scientifically assessed. So you know the level of predictability. For instance, eighty percent. So you can say you can you can put it in percentage. For instance, these methods, when it comes to toxicity, is eighty percent correct. When, when it comes to animal testing, is a traditional method. It has never been assessed scientifically. Yeah, can I ask um, how other EU countries are interpreting the directive? Sorry, how how are other EU countries um, introducing the directive into domestic legislation? Well, um, we, it's still uh, early in the, in the process. We don't know how they're going to, uh, to transpose it. But I think. Um, even as the, the, the great, the, uh, it's the UK, Germany, and France who are the main users of of, um, of animals in uh, in Europe. So, I think it's going to be interesting to watch how this country are doing it. Uh, but at the moment, they haven't they haven't started yet. Uh, but in case of uh, France, uh, for instance, where the um, the current legislation is far lower than that what we have in the UK, they will have to. I think they will have to completely. Uh, Change uh, the current uh, the current framework. I think so. No, it's going to be open for everyone, and it's going to be a uh, twelve weeks uh, public consultation. And we were told by the Home Office that it's, it, it's going to be January, then February, then March, mm -hmm. and now we are nearly in April. Uh, so, but I think they want to they want to publish it before uh, before June. I think I think it's going to be April or May, hopefully April, and it's going to run for twelve weeks. And um, 
as soon as it's out, uh, we're going to uh, make a lot of noise about it. I think it's, uh, it's very important that many people say what they say, what they think. It might, as I say, it might be the, it's, it's the best opportunity, if not the only opportunity, to uh, to uh, for citizens to have a direct, uh, the direct say about this directive. Because if they go through regulation, it's going to go through the whole House of Lords, and your MP is not going to be involved. Uh, that's a problem. Well, at the moment, the, the position of the government is they don't want any gold plating, as they call it. Gold plating meaning going further, uh, improving the directive. So their, their strategy is to, is to copy out any directive that comes. And it, it's a policy, it's a current policy. Uh, however, uh, we think it can be can be changed if, if enough enough people say that uh, they're not happy with that. And we we're talking about about animal animal protection here, so it's it's, it's an issue that's that's very I think very dear to the, the British people in general, and and um, it's an ethical issue. Uh, so I, I think uh, we we have a, a good case to put the government that the public should be involved. Yeah. Have you noticed a, a change in emphasis since the new government came in? And the, the new government seems to be About scrapping up a lot of the previous initiatives uh, in terms of animal welfare brought by the last government. Uh, yeah, in general, in animal welfare, uh, it's, it's not going very well <laughs> with the current government. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to animal testing specifically, I think it's, it's, it's probably a bit early to tell. Uh, there has been an initiative to uh, ban the use of animals in uh, household uh, product testing. That's that's good. Uh, however, we are talking only of, of a small number of animals. Um, so I think that the real test is going to be with this transposition. And uh, there has been a, tra a trend, as I was saying, to um, to deregulate from the, from the Home Office. And this trend has, has not started with this government. It has started before. Uh, and given the, the current cuts in, in, in staff and different departments, I feel that it's going to continue on the same, uh, uh, on the same line. But uh, we will see. I think it's a bit early to tell yet. Just curious, that the one you got up there at the moment saying that Britain should keep its higher standard, or those parts of our law which are higher standard, did the uh, British drugs companies try to lobby to try and get our higher standards lowered down to yeah. the... Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a strategy. Wherever the directive is lower than, um, uh, than the UK standards, they will want to, to do that. And the argument is, it comes from the EU, so it's a common market, and, 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 and directive should be applied the same way uh, 